Hello, welcome to Andrew Fixes. Today I'm going to be doing a brake fluid change on this 2015 Nissan Leaf and I thought I'd bring you along. So we start at the master cylinder in the brake fluid reservoir. You can see this one's over full. That's because I'm doing this video on the same day that I did the brake discs and pads change video. So both of the pistons on the calipers have been fully retracted to make way for the new pads and so we have too much fluid in there. When we're doing a brake fluid change then the first thing to say is that I would usually use a pressure bleeder which with a cap on here that forces brake fluid in but we have two problems with this car with doing that. Firstly I haven't got a cap on my pressure bleeder that fits this and secondly the Nissan manual seems to suggest doing it the old school way which is by pumping the pedal and using that to pump the fluid out. So that's the way I'm going to do it. So we'll start by taking the cap off and then using a, I'm using a mighty vac to suck out as much fluid as I can. And in there, there is a little uh, strainer that's going to stop me getting my mighty vac in any further. I need a clean rag. All right, we won't use a clean rag. We will use some relatively clean pliers. Okay, the strain is out. Take out as much brake fluid as you can. Got a whole container full there. There's a, a, some sort of a baffle in there that's, that's stopping me getting loads and loads out. So I'm going to stop at that point. So the strainer can go back in. Now we can put our fresh fluid in. This is a new container, sealed, just opened it today and I would strongly encourage you to do the same Now that's filled as full as I dare Place that in loosely to stop any muck getting in and now we move to the wheel Right, here's my highly sophisticated system, an old orange squash bottle with a hole drilled in the cap, length of tube in. Some old brake fluid in there, the tube goes underneath the level of the brake fluid. Let's put the camera down now. So pop the cap off the bleed nipple. push the tube over the cap
because the tube is a tight fit on the nipple, as you undo it, the twist in the tube wants to do it up again. So I'm leaving the spanner on there to, to just allow the weight of the spanner to hold the bleed nipple open. You can see the fluid starting to rise in the tube, which is good. What we want is a column of fluid so that as I press the pedal and then let off, we don't draw any air in, we draw fluid back in. And what I tend to do is just remember roughly where the level is on there and decide how many ribs up the bottle I am looking for. So now it's just a case of pressing the brake pedal. Keep doing this, check your reservoir level, and then press the brake a little bit more. Now the reservoir needs topping up with fluid. So after you've pulled through an amount of fluid that you're happy with, or if you've done some work on the brake system such that you've broken the, uh, the connections, you know, when you don't see any more bubbles coming through, and you can tighten that off. Clean up, put the cap back on, on to the next one. I'm not going to show you all four wheels because that would make for a pretty boring video. It's essentially doing the same. There is a suggested order in the workshop manual and that is right hand front first, which is where we started on this one, then left hand front, then right rear, then left rear. So I'm going to crack on and do that now. Okay, so now you know how to do one wheel. It's just a case of going around and doing the other three in the order I've told you already. Make sure you top up the brake fluid reservoir as you go, because it'd be really annoying if you, forget, if you were to forget to do that and end up introducing more air into the system. And I know because I've done that myself before. So top up the reservoir as you go. I managed to do the rear brakes without taking the wheels off just by leaning underneath. So hopefully you'll be able to manage to do that too. Saves a bit of time. When you're finished then, top up the reservoir again to the maximum mark. Then it'll be easy for you to see if uh, you're losing any brake fluid from anywhere over the course of time, although as your pads wear, eventually the fluid will drop down a little bit. When you're all done then, take the vehicle for a test drive. I've just done that on this one. It's a good idea to check the brakes at a really low speed first, just to make sure something terrible hasn't happened, um, which of course it won't have done because you'll have done it properly, but I still like to do it uh, just because if the brakes aren't working properly, I'd rather find out at five miles an hour than at 30 or more miles an hour. So what I found when I took the vehicle for a test drive was that the, there's a much more linear response to the 
braking and the brakes also start to come on higher up on the pedal travel. Now this could be because I did discs and pads at the same time, but I think there's actually a, a bit of both in there as well. One of the brakes that I bled, I did see a tiny little air bubble come out. So th I think that sort of ties in with the fact that the brakes feel a bit different because we have actually removed some air from the system as well as changing the old brake fluid for new. You may read uh, opinions out there that say you don't need to bother changing the brake fluid, that it's absolutely fine. I don't subscribe to that, I'm afraid. I've had a number of cars where I've just changed the brake fluid, so where I haven't done any other brake work at the same time, and it's made a substantial difference. So, as I say, change it if you want, leave it if you want, uh, but my view is uh, I like to change it because I can tell a difference when I have. So that's it for this brake fluid change video. Please feel free to put any questions or comments in the comments section below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps spur me on to create new content for you. Thank you for watching. Remember to check out my other Nissan Leaf videos and I'll see you next time. Bye.